Today we're looking at um, RC, RL, and LC circuits. Just kind of a really quick overview of all of them. Um, I'm also posting this with a chart. Um, the chart will be on the website. This I will also post to the website and send out the Remind 1014. So, the first thing we're going to look at is RC circuits. We're going to go kind of fast through this, so I apologize. So, the biggest thing for this is that, in general, our time constant tau is going to equal um, RC. So when we're looking at, I'll show you where this goes. So for a charging circuit, we have a battery attached to a resistor attached to a capacitor, RC. Um, as soon as we throw the switch, and time equals zero, we're throwing the switch. Um, current is going to begin to flow in this circuit. So when time equals zero, I have full current. Because my capacitor is not charged and there's no voltage across the capacitor, there's no charge on the capacitor. So my current is going to be the EMF of the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor. And the charge on the capacitor, again, is zero. It's uncharged and we're going to be charging it. As time goes on, the capacitor fills up. So in this case, uh, the EMF of the capacitor is the same as the EMF of the battery. If I had multiple branches on this circuit and, and the capacitor was on another branch, then the EMF of the capacitor would be the EMF of whatever branch it's in parallel with. It doesn't need to be bigger than the branch that's in parallel with or it messes everything up. So keep that in mind. So the Q is just going to be the EMF of the capacitor times the capacitance. And here the current is zero because we're full. We can't push any more charges onto the capacitor. Uh, so if we want to look at the graphs, since we said the current started off full at EMF over R and died, it's going to look like that, which is um, exponential decay. So the current is the original current, whatever it is, times, the e, times e to the negative t over tau, where tau is RC. If it's a more complicated circuit, R might change. Uh, so if we had two resistors in there, it would be 2RC. But in this case, it's just RC. Uh, and we're also going to look at the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. It starts off empty, and then it gradually fills up. This is the 1 minus E graph. Tau is still the same thing, uh, so we'd put RC down into there. And Q max, we would probably have to substitute the EMF of the battery times the capacitance. Um, where we get to these things is our differential equation. And for circuits, every time we talk differential equation, we're going to start off with a Kirchhoff loop rule, which means we go around and we say, all right, the total voltage is zero. That's equal to the voltage we get from the battery minus the voltage we lose across the resistor, minus the EMF of the capacitor. So what we need to do is substitute in the EMF of the capacitor. Sorry. EMF of the capacitor is Q over C. In this case, uh, the current is going to be DQ over DT. That's differential. And it's just positive DQ over DT because we are gaining current as time goes on. That's where we get that, um, that's where we get that negative to get that positive charge from. And then we've been through this before. There's another video on it. You would do the separation of variables, take your integrals, you'd be good to go. Then we look at a, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just writing that down. The current is dq over dt in this situation, plus dq because we are charging. Then we have a discharging circuit. Uh, in this case, we start the capacitor connected to the battery, uh, and then we switch from A to B at time equals zero. That means I have a charged capacitor discharging over the resistor. So at time equals zero, my capacitor is already charged as the EMF of the battery, which means I'm going to drop the entire EMF of the capacitor over the resistor. It's so EMF of the battery over the resistor. Um, and the charge on the capacitor is initially full. As time goes on, everything drops down to zero. Capacitor loses its charge, so it loses its voltage. No more voltage, no more current. And again, the capacitor loses its charge. 
Uh, so we're going to look at the graphs for this as well. I, again, starts off full, full current down to zero. So we get the same thing. Oh, I didn't finish that off. Um, I is equal to I zero times E to the negative T over tau. Same thing that we had before. And then looking at Q as a function of time, that starts off full and dies. And in this case, Q is equal to Q zero times E to the negative T over tau. On to our differential equation. So for this situation, EMF the capacitor minus IR, substitute in for the current. And in this case, the current is negative dq over dt because we are losing charge as time goes on. Before we were gaining charge, so it was plus dq over dt. Here we are losing charge, so it's minus dq over dt. Now, when you do this, you're going to have dq over q is equal to negative, um, negative dt over rc. And you're going to do all your integration. Your limits are from 0 to t, but you have to plug in the initial current for the uh, limits on the current side. That's something that's going to happen all the way through this, but for, for this you have to look at what the current is when time is equal to 0 while you're doing this, or what the charge is when time is equal to 0 um, while you're doing this to get the correct thing. Just keep that in mind. Here we have an RL circuit. This is now a resistor and an inductor. In this case, tau is equal to L over R. Our time constant is L over R. So let's look at a charging circuit. For a charging circuit, we're going to have a battery, a resistor, a switch, and an inductor. An inductor is a little loopy thing. L for the inductor is measured in Henry's. So at T equals 0, we're going to close the switch. left off a resistor there. So, when we close the switch at time equals zero, the inductor is going to resist the current that's going through it. The inductor wants the current to be the same as it was before we flipped the switch. There was no current before, so the inductor is going to do whatever it takes to make sure there's no current after. That means the EMF of the inductor in this case is going to be equal to the EMF of the battery. That means we have no current because the current's going to be the same before we flip the switch as it is after. The current was zero when we flip the switch. The current is going to be zero at time equals zero. After a long time, the battery has managed to push some charge through. After a long time, the current is no longer changing, so there's no longer any EMF in the inductor. And in this case, since there's no EMF in the inductor, it acts like a break in the wire. And what we get is the EMF of the battery over R because the inductor is acting like it's not there. And again, if the inductor were in parallel, the inductor would have a voltage equal to whatever it's in parallel with. So look at the graph. Current as a function of time, we start off at zero and we slowly approach our value. And that's the 1 minus E to the negative T over tau part. And then the EMF in the inductor starts off charged and it, sorry, it starts off with a lot of EMF and it dies over time. So that's what we see. And then our differential equation. I didn't sketch that out, but you have the EMF in the battery minus IR minus the EMF in the inductor. And here we know that the EMF in the inductor is going to be DI over DT. And it's So we'll substitute that in there. Um, and, the, and the reason is because my current is now growing with time. Whatever thing is differential, in this case di, it is growing as time goes on. That's why we're going to have that as positive. So just plug that in. And of course you would um, put di on one side, divide it by that function. And again, 
your limits are going to be from 0 to t on the time side, as always. And since the current was 0 when time was 0, your lower limit for current is also going to be 0. Now, for the discharging situation, same kind of complicated graph that we had before. I'm going to put two different resistors in, R1 and R2. I'm going to switch it from A to B uh, at time equals 0. Now, as we do this, looking at the time equals 0 condition, the EMF of the inductor wants to be the same as it was the moment, sorry, the current in the inductor wants to be the same as it was the moment before we flip the switch. Before we flip the switch, the current through the inductor was EMF over R1. So after we throw the switch, the current in the inductor needs to be EMF over R1. That means that the potential from the inductor is going to be the current in the inductor times R2. It's going to be whatever EMF we need to have to get the same current we had the moment before. That's why it's the EMF in the battery divided by R1 times R2. Okay. So the easiest thing to do is look at the current first, then substitute that in there to get the current through the inductor. Because we want the current to be the same before and after we flip the switch. And then after a long time, all of the energy has been lost, so there's no more EMF in the inductor, and there is no more current. Um, and remember, the reason things are staying the same is because of conservation of energy. So if we look at that graph, current as a function of time, starts off full and it dies. Same thing with the EMF. Starts off full and it dies. So that gives me the little exponential decay thing. And then we do our differential equation, EMF the inductor minus IR2, because that's the one that's going to be discharging over. In this case, the EMF is negative LDI dt because my current is dying as a function of time. I'm losing current, so that needs to be negative di over dt. And we substitute that in. And we would separate, and we'd get a current side of the equation, we'd get a time side. And on the time side, uh, we would integrate from zero to time, and on the current side, we would integrate from my initial current, which is right there, to some later current I. And that's what's going to give us this nice, um, this nice function uh, for the decay of the current. And the big idea here uh, is that an inductor will resist changes in current. That's an energy consideration. We know, we know that the potential energy of the inductor is equal to uh, one-half Li squared. And so, as we're, going, as we're going through this, as we're flipping switches, we have to have the same energy before we flip the switch and after. That's why the current has to be the same before we flip the switch and after. All right, our last one is an LC circuit. Um, we're not going to calculate any tau's or anything. But for this, we're going to charge the capacitor first by connecting it to A. So the capacitor will be charged up with the EMF of the battery. And then we're going to flow, throw it over to B. So after a long time of being at A, we go from A to B. So that's going to be time zero. Now what happens is that the charge is going to leave the capacitor, which gives us a current. So we're going to begin to have a changing current because the capacitor is pushing charges through the inductor. But the inductor is pushing back. So initially my current starts off at zero and increases because charges begin to move through the circuit. Uh, but the inductor 
resists because that's what the inductor does, and it pushes back. But then current begins to flow in the inductor, and it wants it to continue to flow, so it's going to charge up the capacitor. And now I have a charged capacitor and a dead inductor, and it's going to flip back and forth. So what we're going to have is an energy swap between the inductor and the capacitor. The energy is going to go from being in the capacitor because of stored charge to being in the inductor because of stored current. Um, and so, if you recall, the energy stored in the capacitor is one-half CV squared. The energy stored in the inductor is one-half Li squared. And so these two things are going to be equal to each other. The maximum energy of the capacitor is going to be equal to the maximum energy of the inductor. Um, this is true, but they happen at different times. We have different maximum energies at different times. To get a fuller picture of what's happening, um, to get a fuller picture of what's happening, let's look at the differential equation for this um, capacitor discharging over the inductor circuit. So, again, a Kirchhoff's loop. We're going to go pick up some EMF from the capacitor, and we're going to lose some EMF from the inductor. We're going to plug in what we know those things to be. So EMF of the capacitor is just Q over C. The EMF of the inductor is LDI over DT. Uh, and in this case, so the two things that we're going to use, actually, you don't need that real quick. Let me go, let me go back. So the EMF in the inductor is negative L di over dt. And it's going to take me one more step to explain why we have a negative sign there. I have a Q in that equation. So I need to change di over dt to d squared q over dt squared. It's the second derivative of the charge. Now, as time goes on for this first little bit, we're going to lose charge off of the capacitor. Since we're losing charge, we're going to need that negative L di over dt thing. That's what's going to give us this positive. So now we get q over c plus L squared, L d squared, or dt squared of q. Okay. We have a second derivative of q in there. Uh, we're going to put, we're going to solve for the second derivative of q. That's negative 1 over Lc times q. So we have the second derivative of a function is equal to negative something times that original function. That, my friends, is our simple harmonic motion condition. Uh, and if anybody asks, the angular frequency of that circuit is the square root of 1 over LC. You may not have to do too much with this, but you do have to know what's happening with the energies in this circuit. So, that's it.